Hi, I'm Derek McGrath, to the Secrets of Irish Burnaby Boxing. On these tapes, you can learn the old style techniques for the Burnaby fighters, how they train, the techniques, the punches, and strategies they used. We're also going to cover dirty boxing, how modern boxers can use these techniques to demonstrate their opponents, illegally in the boxing ring, and legally in the mixed martial arts ring. All the stuff I'm going to show you today, you can use for self defense or as a deterrent. I'm definitely not advocating you actually use any of these techniques in the ring because they're so dangerous. But if someone's using them on you, you will be able to defend against them and pay them back in kind if they start to frisk. Okay, we're going to start with the basic strike techniques. As well as using their fists, the boxers also use their palms, the heel of the palm, the forearm, and the elbow. All these ways that you can punch really, really hard without actually breaking the knuckles off the head. Now the first thing we're going to do is using the heel of the palm inside the punch. It can be used as a basic strike or as a hidden foul strike in boxing as well. So let's go over how it works. Okay, put your hands up with me. Okay. So instead of punching to the chin this way, with the knuckles that way, we're going to use the heel of the palm. That means that the final second of the punch, you twist your hand over and the heel strikes it that way, pushing it across. Okay, just so you can see it better. Coming out, coming out, coming out the last second, flick it over, bang, cut across to the heel. Now the heel is very heavy, very hard, and when you hit something with it, it's going to really go. And also there's no danger of hurting your hand with it. Hitting on the point of the chin, spins the head, a better knockout. Now, if you want to get really violent with this, the way you do it. You skim it out at the last second, bam, you cut him across the mouth. That's going to knock his lips against his teeth and rip his lips apart. It can also break his teeth as well. A lot of blood there to the stop the fight. You can do it in a combination, throw it that way first, and then spin through the second punch, a basic punch afterwards. The same punch goes across the nose, slams the nose sideways across the face, packing it. Hitting it sideways at the heel would break it a lot easier than hitting it with the glove or with the bare fist straight on. So we've got across the chin, whip the mouth, the nose. And uh, if you want to cut them on the eyes, you bring the palm across, skim it across the eyes. That would tear the eyelid, or hit a bit higher, it would tear the eyebrow. If you have gloves on, you whip the glove here, it would tear the eyebrow easier. And also with the gloves on, you would hit way harder with the palm of the hand like that. These are dangerous because it can easily be an accidental punch. Even if you hit with the palm, going across a normal punch, it looks like you just did a normal punch and missed him slightly. So the referee won't call it and won't see it. So be very aware of that one. If someone uses it on you and you do it back to him, it will really cut him apart. You can show two in the combination this way as well. We might go with a palm, palm here, and another one up to the eye, like that. That will really come up really bad. Okay. So here's the basic jab, popping out that way. So we're jabbing out. And back. Now with the palm strike, at the last second it flicks over and the heel hits here. Usually you get the fist closed and it goes across like that. So basic jab and the palm through. So really speedy, speedy cut come through this way. And you go from this side here. This angle again it's even hard to see it. You actually are hitting it here and not like that there, okay? Coming across again here. Using it with the back hand, in this case my left hand, you get way more power and can really stop him with one good shot here. You definitely stop him coming forward, didn't you? This hand here, a speedy quick cut. So you go from this side or here. And because there's no give in the wrist, you actually can deliver more power with the arm here than you can with a basic punch because there's no give in the wrist here, there's no weak point on impact at all. It goes out and back. Again, we can hide it, basic jab, come through with the palm, that way like that. Now we're going to do the sliding forearms. This part of the bone here strikes. It's not really a straight forearm strike, 
it's a sliding forearm strike. So feel it in your shoulder. So instead of going like this, here, we slide that way. And then you lean them small, but at the same time. So you go out, and you lean them drive it, bang, that way. Instead of going here, the correct thing needs to do here is to go slide that way like that. Okay. So, let's see it. It's coming in here, the same way. Usually the best bits here is for the mouth and the nose and the cheekbone. So I'm coming in here, I miss it deliberately. This form slides through into the mouth, bang, pushes across. Of course, across the nose, across here. I'm moving again the eyes, there. From this side again, through, bang, that way. Or across here. Whichever way you go, as long as you stay away from the skull, you won't hurt your arm at all. Coming through. That's a huge, huge, powerful strike. And again, the forearm is going to cut him badly and smash him through his face. If you do it with the glove on, the edge of the glove here will protect your arm and make it a stronger, more powerful weapon. Remember, the gloves are there to make your hand stronger. The cuts of the gloves and the heel of the glove here and here, they make your hand much more powerful for all the strikes. That's a sliding forearm coming in here, through, coming straight through here, and through again. It's a huge, huge part of the shot, it loads it out behind it, and it comes through. So out here, you set it up, you come through, back, 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 that way and through. You threw your punch at the head, he slipped it, you missed the punch, and cuts him back as well. The other part, same thing here, you missed the punch, you slide through, back, back, that way here. Striking surface here. We can do a combination as well, hold up me. You might throw a straight jab, he slips the punch, it's coming up again. Bang, you catch him purely accidentally on the way up again with the sliding forward. It's a great one to see if someone's got very good head movement coming in towards you very fast and you have a hard time stopping with a real punch, especially your shorter opponent, and you can't get leverage into a power shot. The form even like so strange, the form comes across. That was something coming into you. Here and here when you set this down, that was something coming in. So we go across, basic jab, follow through, form coming through. Or left hand first, follow through, form coming through again. Motion, so keep your hands up. Okay, when you hit on the door, okay, he's coming in, he's getting past my punches. I can't throw a full power shot from here and stop him coming with the enemy. So I flick my hand over and the four hits him here, that drives him back. And then another basic punch and knockout. Okay, still again, okay, so it's just my jab, I miss him, boom. He's coming in close, I follow through here, bang. Knock him back. If I do it again, I, I don't mean to have space for an orthodox punch for the uppercut. And if he's getting in very fast, I haven't got time to actually set an uppercut, but even from here I can throw this punch, bang across and force his head back and punch him again. Because I mightn't have time, so again, I mightn't have time to actually get the uppercut off. And his hands could be up guarding it as well. But it's this way, I would definitely force him off me. This next punch, the axe, is a really, really blatant foul punch. Or it can be a hidden one as well. And you can use it to mix martial arts, obviously. But here's how it works. So you use it from the power side. So that's okay. It's coming through here on the same angle as a right hook. But instead of actually throwing a right hook, at the final second, you twist over and you use the heel of your hand, the heel of the glove, and the form as well. And it comes over and down across, a bit like a karate inner forearm block. As you go on, you see a big scenario between bare knuckle boxing and traditional karate, especially the older styles. A lot of similarities there, we cover them one on the tape. So we're coming through, across, temple, the jaw, behind the ear. If you get closer, the whole forearm goes through here as well. Very, very heavy, powerful shot. Now what you can do is throw the punch, at the last second flick it over and cut down, bang, with the forearm and the fist as well. Hook punch, hook punch, hook punch, twist it a second, there as well. You can use it as well if someone's coming towards you. The hook on here, 
you're striking, bang, follow off the strike, put your head forward as well, just to the way from. So, he's coming up here, control the punch out there, here. At the end, glove hooks on, pushes his head down as you go off to the right. That really works well, stopping someone coming in onto your chest. Help him on his way and push him down. Put all your weight on top of his head and strike down with it. Okay, see that again? It's coming through here, coming across, hit him here as hard as you can. The glove hangs on his head, push down on his head, come around, lift up again, boom, catch him in normal shot again. Now, if Peter's hands up really tight and he's guarding his face, you can still just go right into his guard there, just club him aside, club him as hard as you can with your hand, and then you can fight you with a more basic punch. If you hit it like either there, now notice my forearm, the biggest part of my forearm, hits him right in the wrist as well. So you can try and actually crush his wrist bone, bang here as well. And if Peter's hands are where they are now, actually touching his face, you're actually driving his glove into his face as well. So you're going to hit the full power into his face, even though his hands are up. So great, great, great power punch to use. You can use it from close range as well. If we're in here and we're in a tight clinch, you can lift off, spin your body through, bang, here as well, like an inner form block. So you spin your body. Now all the inside punches, don't be doing them this way. Make sure you actually spin your body hard and through, so you spin that way. While lowering the center of gravity, if you stay too tall, you throw the punch, twist your body, you can easily get thrown. Make sure any of these punches in close. Base down nice and low, spin through. That's like a deform that way. Coming through, coming through. You spin the arm in, watch my elbow. Tucks in, heart comes in here. You also twist your hip. Remember, all punches, as you know, come from the leverage of the legs and the hips and the shoulders. The arm helps it at the end. It's not just a big club. That works though, but it's not just a big club. Around and down that way. So you're coming through here, like that. And the form goes all the way through and back. You throw the fake punch, last second, tuck the fish down and across cutting him. You can cut your fist across his ear or his temple. If you're doing it the wrong way, across the nose as well. What's that now? We throw left a right hook. At the last second, through. And you're going down as well to help him on his way down. Also pushing him off balance, setting up another punch. If you do the hidden left hook or right hook, as you say, then it would be the fist doing it. If you just go for a power forearm, I would definitely use the biggest bone here. Or if you're wearing a boxing glove, then use the heel of the glove even better. That way you can't hurt your hands. A really, really clumsy looking punch that goes in, hits them, and stuns them. Out and through. Now the hammer hand or the hammer forearm. It's coming back across here, striking with this bone here. Or the fist. I would say definitely use the bone. If you wear gloves on, use your fist. But the bone is even better. All right. Using the bare hand, you want to jam your wrist into his head to make sure it's the glove or the form best thing to use. Now this one is used really as a counter. I missed the right hook. I said Peter, dip under the hook for me. Boom. Up again. Then it comes back up again. You uncard your body, twisting your waist, let it go and it goes right out through the hammer. Down. Uncard your body. There, best way to use it really, okay? Because in missing the hook, you're calling for a huge power shot when you come back. It's really, really gonna be a devastating shot. Again, it can strike anywhere from the chin to the temple. Ear, nose, eyes. If you manage to turn the head sideways, but you can see that's gonna take him right out, right into the nose and the mouth. That would definitely stop him. One shot here with the nose, that would definitely stop him dead. So one more time, he dips under the hook, come back. And again, spin your whole body through, across, there. Follow through then, with a basic punch. 
you can see this used to in traditional martial arts like karate, kung fu, they all use it. That tells you if, if you use between Ireland, Britain and Okinawa and China, it must be a good shot to be using all of this at the same time. Great, great spin, powerful shot. See from the other side, it's under, comes up, and through using your whole body. One more time, under, comes up. Now, obviously, you can use it from different angles and different setups from that, but that's the basic way of using it here. You can just go here as well, dip over, bang, come through, slide over, boom, come through as well. I mean, if I slide over from my right hand, I slide this way, he recovers his guard, boom, you come back to it again, slides over, move the head out of the way, and you come back that way again. Okay, let's get in the patch then. We come over, we come back, boom, across it before I'm better that way. I slide over, come through, there. I've missed the hook punch, come back again, and through again. Notice that I'm planting my feet, I'm spinning my whole body in the garden. So I miss the hook and I come through. Miss it again, come through. But this one, the more you spin your waist, the better. You can punch it with a drill, so that's over here. And Peter chose maybe a straight punch here. I step off to the side. As I come up, it's a quick one now. Here. Again. So I'm doing it now from very close range coming out. That way. Okay, let's get a hunting. Let's head back to the pastor. And one more. Here, very close spin there again. As you get better at twisting your body, more powerful for all these punches, you can have a devastating power at very close range. You don't need to go. You can go from here, tight, and come through from that range and force him back. The good thing is with these punches here is when you lay your weight into the punch, Rather than just stopping it here, you can push forward into his head and then hit him again. The same thing with the palm strikes. Again, instead of just hitting him and be hiding, hit him, post pushing his head and hit him again. That stops him from doing another shot back at you. Rather than just popping, returning, hit him again. You force him back here, you force him back here by hanging your hand in his head and hit him again. That will control him and most importantly, break his balance. When he's not balanced, he can't punch. If you look at um, some very good boxers, you watch old tapes of Prince Nassim, see he always does that. He comes in, shows a huge punch, and then keeps his glove on him, shoves him back, so he can't punch him back and upsets him. It's a great way to upset your opponent, throw him off balance, and make him slower to counter. Now, <clears throat> the spitting hammer fist. How this one works is you get turned off from your opponent and then he's got to fight you with something before he just beats the crap out of your back of your head. So here's what I'm going to do. I've here, I've thrown a punch, maybe he's sliced at me, maybe he's hit me, and I've gotten off balance and my back's turned to. Uh, so I've got to come through really quickly, bring the forearm up and swing it around that way and strike him with the forearm. Now it can be a blind shot, which can catch him anywhere, but I would say to you if you can, when you're spinning, to keep the spinning quickly is to turn your shoulders and head. If you turn your shoulders and head quickly, that will give you a really quick spin and good power. On this side, again, I've been turned off from him. I don't want to get pounded. I spin through, bang, catch him with a blind shot. Hopefully, he's not, come, hopefully he's not coming with his hands up. He's coming in punching. When he comes in punching, he's open to getting that shot here. It's not one you ever expect to get when you're coming in when someone's pushed off you. It's really can be a desperation shot, but if you practice well, it's a knockout shot. If you don't practice it, it's a desperation shot, they hardly ever work. So take your time to practice it different ways. I've been turned off, I twist, spin my shoulders and head quickly, and I come through to here. You want to aim to follow all the way through past his head out the other side. Even if he blocks it, it will stop him hitting you and give you a chance to recover back ready again. Okay, let's see it in the pads. So I'm turned off. I'm coming through. Bang to here. So, let's do it. I'm turned off and through like that. Do it again. And one more. 
all the way through. The force wants to knock him back. If you knock him back, and he turns you up, he'll be off balance, you get out of the way. If you have her down, you would take his head right off with this one. All right, this one is an overhand forearm strike. If you want to see it being used, watch something like Bob Sapp saying K1 does it all the time. Hits with the here, here with the hand, or the form, and he never ever gets called for it at all. Big, big, heavy shot. He brings it down in the head, bang with the edge of the glove and the forearm. And it's usually one of these big weapons to actually stop somebody. And the referee's never calling for it, so you can do it and get away with it if it's done properly. Okay, let's do it. Now, two ways you can use it. One, you're coming over like an overhand right. But instead of throwing a basic overhand right, you strike him with the heel of the glove and the forearm anywhere on the head. And because such a heavy downward shot, it really knocks him off balance. That's the first way you can do it. Just come over, bang your whole body down, and crush his head. Now the second way you can do it, maybe if I throw a jab, you know, dip some of the jab, that's not it, good. And then you come down, when he's down there, striking your fist, sorry, your forearm, across the back of his neck. You can do it this way too, with the edge, bring, again, so it dips under, and bring the forearm down on the edge of it, as if you're going to crack his skull. What you're really aiming for here, actually, is to strike the vertebrae in the neck as hard as you can. Bang, down. Really, really try and crush his neck and go all the way through it. Or just bounce off of it, crush it. And the good thing is, again, it dips down again. Bang. When he's down there, keep your weight on him. That buys you time to push off and go again. I don't want to get a smaller, shorter, good infighter in on me. And he's down again. Again. I can't really get leverage here and here as good as he can because he's shorting me. He can have very good powerful punches from in being inside me. But I can go bang and hold his head down and then hit him or push off and get out of the way. So the way what you're using is a shorter person coming in tight and his head in your chest, going through the body and then up to the head. So one more time, just have to standing there normally, we come through a huge overhand right, but instead of this one coming down, we go over. I missed his head, oops, bang. Down you go. He dips under another punch, dip under, come through, bang. Okay, I'm very clumsy again, made a stupid mistake there. One more time. and you smash his neck as hard as you can. And you say, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, watch it again. Overhand right. Missed it. You can see here, the mean part first. Bang through. Okay, that's good. So we throw overhand right, and come down and through. And through. Now, if you use the edge of the arm, then think more of actually cutting down and a bit forward as well. Or you can just go straight down. Both ways are good to do it. So if you go straight down first, bring it up, and then uh, his head comes in under my punches, get out of there. Now using the forward one as well, it's going over, down, and forward, that way. If you're ever pushing through my whole body, going into it again. So we go over, and forward to forearm. Straight through. That way. Now the palm uppercut. You can see this one used in pan place. Look at any old tips of Bass Newton and you see him come up, boom, with the heel of the palm. And you can see him drop Pank Shamrock with one device as well. It's a great shot to use. It's coming straight up here. And again, you throw it all the way up, bang, use the heel. Okay, actually stop that one. So Peter, dips down again. So as you can see there. And you're coming up, bang, keep them off you again. It goes right up, chin, nose, temple, eye, anywhere really you get one side of the head or the front of the face is going to do a lot of damage. So he goes under, comes up, bang. Again, I'm showing a basic up with a glove. Do it again, here. Okay, I get a bit too close, I accidentally go bang, catch him with the heel of the hand again. It's so fast and quick that no one is going to catch that happening to you with a glove punch on. 
if you're doing pan crisp rules or UFC rules, it's illegal. Just bang, up you go. One time, go under, bang, up you come like that. A huge, huge part of the shot. It's the best way to gym on the pad. Again, constant, constant drilling will make it work. You have to practice all these moves a lot, like hours, to get really good leverage and also to hide them as well. So, up like Here. Okay, so pump for the heels, pick them up. So it comes in, bang. Huge, huge shot. Now, next is the back knuckle. If you go back a couple of hundred years, there's a famous bare knuckle fighter called Daniel Mendoza. He fought in England and it was called Mendoza's Chopper. He was one who really popularized his use in bare knuckle fighting. He would use it as a counter. He'd block one hand, back across, rip it across and down, strike with the knuckles. He used it to cut your eyes, close the eye, cut the nose and come across, usually basically for cutting. With a glove with a glove on, you can really hurt some of it. With the bare knuckles, it's really a cutting, tearing weapon. You are not probably gonna knock someone out with a, with a backhand. You'll probably hurt your hand really if I knock them out. But it's great coming across, whipping down and cutting. So here's how he used it. Came my parry a punch and come back this way. Across and down, across the eye and temple or the nose and shoe. So you parry a punch and shoe. He brings his elbow up high and shoe. Now you have to remember that in burn the fighting the pace was a lot slower. They'd show less punches and they'd be heavier punches being a bit slower and more careful not to hit the head but hitting only the face and the nose. Maybe the odd time between the eyes as well. But we need to be very very careful not to break your hands. So he had more time to do this and that with that kind of technique. Modern boxing and fighting is a lot faster, so you might not have time to go parry, boom, with the same hand. You might have time, but probably you won't. So the best way to do it in modern style is just yeah, to come a while across. Again, maybe you missed a punch, you weaved it over, whatever. When you come up, bring your hand out, through and down. You're striking the eyes, the nose, they're the main targets, the bridge of the nose as well. If it comes down on the bridge of the nose, a great target takes it comes up and down or across here. So my slip over, comes back, flick across. It's a really, really quick shot after a slip. Move my head, came back here, move my head, while it down, it goes from here. It doesn't travel very far. He smack it, boom, down his nose. It will make his eyes water, blind him, and give you time, bang, to fall through with a more basic power shot afterwards. The chopper, or the back knuckle, as it's called nowadays. Out, flick, up, and flick down again. Really a great quick shot to blind someone or cut the nose open. So, you've come over, comes out, back over and shoot over and shoot more of a cutting motion you can see I'm bringing it back the elbow comes towards me and shoot so flick it out and these knuckles here are doing the main striking so slip over and back over and back and one more over and back across if you're bringing it down you can bring it down that way, up and down, like that. So, from over and down, over. And the knuckles here are heavy, dragging deeply along his nose and the way down. The elbow being pulled down, the hips sinking a small bit as well. Elbow, hips sinking down into it. So we slipped over and down, over and down, over and down. Bang through the nose. The elbow strikes. Now these are used in all martial arts really. Karate, Kung Fu, Thai boxing, mixed martial arts, they all use them. But you'll be using them properly and effectively. So here's what we're going to do. 
Now, there's three or four basic round style edible spikes we can use. Horizontal, coming through, coming down, and even coming up here. They're done with the point of the edible or the forearm. You see the point of the edible is illegal in most tournaments today, even UFC. But if you use it on someone, it's a devastating thing. It's illegal because it's so dangerous because of all the cuts it causes. So, with the roundhouse elbow coming through, downward, bang, upward, coming up. Anywhere on the face, this land is going to cause serious damage. The eye, the nose, the mouth, the temple, the point of the jaw, the chin, even the eardrum. They're all going to splash apart like that. The ways you can combine them and actually use them well or one, I throw the jab, he slips off, I come through, bang with a power hand, attacks are coming bye bye. Or I'm really close, left hook, come over, and through. You can use that with a head grab, I'm gonna bring his head in tight to me with a clinch, controlling it here, spiking here, same from here, over to here like that. If we're tied up maybe in over on the clinch, I wanna split the clinch come through, bang, clinch again. So I'm in tie from the clinch, I split the clinch, bring my shoulder back to space, this shoulder here come back to space, then bang, through onto the ear that time, split, and through. Now if we're here again, we can also do him into his hands as well, because a very high guard, just bring it right through, hit him on the wrist again, crush his hand and wrist into his face. You can again crack his wrist here. If you break his hand with this, he won't be hitting him anymore with his hands at all. Come through, bang, like that, do a stop. Key points in doing a quick, powerful edible strike. One, the hand is open and a bit relaxed. If it's closed, it has the tension muscles in the forearm, then you'd be a bit slower and tighter and less powerful. Two, leverage, twist your body through. And every shot you throw, it should always, always be a leverage shot. There's no time for little flicky shots, really. Okay, so the round is elbow first. It comes around here. I'm spinning my waist and shoulders, pushing hard, and letting my elbow go through his head out the other side. So we're coming through. All the way through, like that. Now, if it's coming downwards, flick it up and down. My weight's going to drop a tiny bit down behind this here. Notice my palm is always here. If you turn your palm too much this way, you're going to strike with this muscle here. It's way weaker. Same thing here. Make sure your palm stays here, palm down. Never ever turn into your chest. So, we're going down now, over and down, over and down. The other glove. And now coming upwards here, bring the point in, especially in the upper door, okay? The point cuts his face, we close his eye as well. So we come up that way, up, up, and up. And shoot like that. Now we're actually going to start getting a bit more dangerous. We're going to use the palms and the gouges to the eyes as well. Now, the way to use these is not to actually go and put your fingers in his eyes. The way to do them really is to do them off a technique of like a punch. That way gives you more time and space to do it with. So if I'm here, Peter, going hands up here, and I throw my palm out that way, I open my hand at the last second and smack him in the face with it. Catch the nose, bang, brilliant. On the way back, the thumb goes into the eye and comes out. You can also do it here. Post your palm and his head is coming towards you, then look for his eye with your tongue and then scratch with your with the nail or push into it to gouge it. Best way to do it there. The advantage of here is he's coming towards me, I put my hand on his head, force him back. That gives me time to find his eye and take it out and then follow through with a punch. Even with a boxing mixed martial arts glove on, if someone does this to you, they still get the tongue and close your eye and hold your head so you can see this hand coming through at all. Doing it this way, just going out and going hop and trying to poke his eye out, that's exceptionally difficult to do. You'd have a hard enough time actually hitting him with a basic punch. 
never mind actually finding his eye, boom, in the middle of a fight and gouging it. Best thing is get your hand in the face first by posting, it's coming towards me, posting his face, scratch it out there. You can also do it as a basic jab, you're jabbing out, boom, when you jab, open your hand, tongue's in your eye gets, we jab out there, bang, scratch off on the way out. Jab, scratch off, illegally, keep your hand on his head to hold it, when this hand comes off, this one he with a big power punch at the end. You're covering his eyes, you're hurting him, he can't see the power punch coming and because you're touching him, when you have your hand on him, you won't miss him with the other hand. You can easily miss by him moving. Once you're touching him and you throw a punch, you will never ever miss him because you know exactly where he is. Comes out there, goes across. You can also do the setup as well. Post your palm onto his face, push his head back, and then you're going to fire this hand, bang, into his throat. That's a great shot to use as well. Off the palm is coming in, you post your palm onto his chin, force his head up, boom, a very quick shot. Now the shot is like this. It's, it's not really a power, you haven't got time. You post up and you go like that, quick, onto his throat, up, quick to the throat like that. One more time. You push it up, boom, quick, Adam's apple there. Great way to use it. Now we're getting closer for holding and hitting. There's a load of groups you can use to actually hold some and him at the same time. The important thing once again is leverage, can't say enough. So let's take off Peter here and I'll throw a punch to the body or the head here. So I'm holding it one hand back of his head. Now I'll throw the punch up here but I must actually use my hips and waist and legs to push into the power. So it's no good holding when doing this. You have to quickly push in for power. The same with body here again, but hit him here to the body. You come over here. You must sink your weight, twist and go bang, bang, bang. Not just go. And the same if I'm held in distance here and we're in tight. I don't want to be going, I have to go twist, 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 hit him, twisting, again, make some space, twist up, boom, to get him off you. If you're holding his head, hang on to the head, put it towards your elbow, twist your body, bang, bang. This bit here, won't really do it. You have to twist there. Now holding, twisting and hitting, it's really hard to do. That's why you don't see it done that much at all. People just go, they keep it shots. So you gotta practice being here and doing it. Bang. Being here and doing it up and around and up. Even being here and going bang, bang. Take your knuckle, drive it in hard as you can. That hurts my as well from the clinch. Knuckle here. Punch the door down on this side to the spleen. Take your two top knuckles and twist them in at the end, like that. Down, here, down, like that, and you hit him. On the other side, do the same thing to his liver. Hit him really hard in the liver, you seriously hurt him and drop him. Over, down, and push, over, up. Use the top two knuckles for these strikes. Now, if you open any of the old Bernicke box manuals, you always see this hole. They call it chancery. Nowadays, it's called headlock. You've got his head, wedge under your arm, and you're striking here. Now, again, point. Don't just thump him with your fist. Twist your body, apply leverage. Stay low, hang on tight. If you come up higher, even more powerful punch, but it's much easier to counter and show you an escape if you come up higher. So you have to practice getting down low and throwing a full punch from here. You often see as well in the very, very old fights, they'd punch him here and leave their hand here and they'd gouge their fore knuckle into his eye after throw the punch, bang, forms into the eye, out again, they'd do it again and again and again, repeated gouging to the eyes and chancery. Now when you're holding his head, I've got to kind of loose now. If you're really doing it, take your hand under his chin. That's very important now. That stops his head getting out. If your hand's under his chin, 
and my tum now, this bone here in my tum is holding his chin. That stops him putting his head out, okay? And also, it's also, it's not a great submission, but if you have him here, you can grab on here and squeeze between your ribs here and your forearm here. And you can go for a chokehold here as well, but grabbing on here and squeezing tight. There. If someone does it to you in the ring, in a match, it's illegal. But you can just hang on to your head for a few seconds, waiting for the break. And while you're waiting for the break to happen, you're getting choked out. There's no blood coming back down from your head. You're getting weaker and tired. It's a great way to actually rock someone and tire them out during a match. Just hang on and squeeze. As long as your tongue is under the chin, you'll be cutting off the electrical supply to the brain and it will tire them out more and more as the match goes on. In tight, leverage it, bang. It's called front chancery. Keep your legs and base nice and low from here. Now, if Peter has me in chancery, there we go. Okay, that's small, so you see the camera? Okay, now, first things here. One, you gotta stop him hitting you with this hand. Okay, do it again there. Take it here and here. So you reach behind his back and through here. If you can't get it the first time, punch again. Drop with both hands here. You're gonna get his hand and then push it back and slide through. Now you're free from the punch. He's still got you in the headlock here, but he can't choke you out and move with one hand. It won't happen at all. First after breaking it. Now, if you look at any of the old manuals, they show this move to defend against the chance free hold. Your hand forces back his head and you push him over your knee and down onto the ground. Watch my feet as well now. I'm here, I'm going for the show, this knee slides behind him on this side, deep and true. His big mistake really was putting his foot here. You push up, push your knee into him, drop your weight down. I cross him here at that. You can follow through by dropping your knee hard as you can onto his sternum or his solar plexus. That there alone will take him out. And go from here, face out. Boom. You can punch as hard as you can. Elbow him as well from, from here, knee in strong position. The drop alone and the knee will finish him off. If he, by some chance he's still there, bang, finish him with some power toss and knee and stomach. Now, how to use your head effectively in a match. Two ways, attacking and defending. Now, there's blatant ways you can use it. I'm in a clinch here. I'm tightened up. I whip my head across. I want to use this part of the skull here, the thickest, heaviest part of the skull on this side here. And I use that whip across, bang, into his temple, side of the face. It comes through, whips, across here. Blatant use from the clinch. You can use it too in the clinch, just pushing against his head while you're working around her. It's a great thing people use as well if someone's already cut the side of the face. They get into a clinch, and when the clinch, they'll rub the head into the cut to make it wider. So if you ever have a cut, keep, your, keep that side of your face away from his head in the clinch. Now, you can also use as well from the clinch, coming in this way, boom, straight in. So you're resting a normal match or a real fight, Bring your head boom, that way forward to his face. Again, you want to use the top of your head against his face. It ain't your head against his head, it's your head against his face. So in close range here, chin down, mouth closed, bang. From here, head across, bang with the head that way as well. If you're shorter than he is and you're coming tight in here at that, bring your head up, drive, whip it back like that again. So. You slip on his punch, you bob up, boom, true. You bob up, boom, using your legs for power. Really, really powerful shot against a taller guy to get him off you. He's hugging you, tightening you up, not in any work. You push up, bang. The head's in his chest, it will go straight up, boom, you can't miss his chin. That'll give you space to work with there, okay? Those are the main ones done from the clinch, really. The sideways whip, the straight, and the up all done with the top of the head. Now, if we're at a more normal boxing range out of the kitchen, we can still use him in an attack. So let's say here, I've thrown my jab again. Again, I missed him, I got a very bad jab, I miss all the time. Coming in, bang, 
off the jack. So I'm stepping through, I nod my head. The full force of the step through and my head hit him right in the face. If you watch Holyfree Tyson, he does it all the time. And because Holyfree is a skinhead, it comes in, bang, it really hurts bad. If you have hair, it's not so bad at all. If the guy is shaven headed, the head would hurt a lot more and cuts more as well. So I've missed my job again, driving through, head catches in full force and because I'm stepping in, it's way more powerful as well. Now let's say Peter's thrown the jab and he's stepped in behind the jab. My head comes down and he's coming in very fast. I come in to meet him and again, my head stops him coming in. A guy comes barring into you really, really tight. You drop your chin to your chest. You step in, chin, step in his jab, bang. That stops him chasing you. You smash his teeth, his nose, you cut his eye, hit him on the chin. Another great way to use it. Stepping in, true, splang him there. Now, if you're fighting bare knuckle, you all know what the danger of breaking your hands. So, one great way to defend against punches is if you're to say a basic straight white punch here, drop your head down, take it on top of your head. Maybe he's too fast for your parries, you didn't see it coming, you've only one little chance to go at that. And it's coming in and you cover your head. Do it again, punch it And he smashes his hand apart. It's these bones here that would break, or even his knuckles. They smash open. If he's one handed, especially with his power hand gone, he won't win the fight. If you look back at some of the older counts of bare knuckle matches, they're always, always breaking one of the hands, even both the hands, and instead of fighting on and on and on, they break him on the elbows of the opponent, punching up here, breaking him on the wing post, because in the old days it was a wooden post centre the wing, no padding, or breaking him on the opponent's head as well. That's a great way to defend against him. Uh, all things the hook punch, right up to the head. Bring your head down again. If he catches you with these knuckles here, throwing the hook punch like that, or here, hit you again, he'll break his hand apart. So two great ways to use your head to defend against punches, as well as just using your hands to defend. Also, on breaking his hands, if he throws a punch again, if I block it that way, again, he smash his hand on my elbow. So, punching out there, you pick it up, there. Again, it's a common difference you see all the time in boxing, the, we call it check. So when you check, the elbow comes up, it's a great way to actually catch his hand. Punch again. Boom. Catch his hand on the end of the check. You notice too in Bernard Good Fighting, they often held their guard this way. Like a karate guy, here and here. This hand here. Now, why didn't they cover the face with this hand? One reason is a point here, we call it the solar plexus, they call it the mark. And one of the main targets they had is actually to plant your fist. Boom right in the mark and drop the guy. They actually thought it was more devastating than a headshot because with bare knuckles you couldn't really throw a huge headshot for hurting your own hands but you could throw a full power shot to the body and as everyone knows a solar plexus shot is one of the worst ones you can get. So the reason the hand was held here was to cover the mark as well and also you gotta remember they were punching upwards to strike with this knuckle here to the, to the point of the chin and the nose. They weren't really punching bang top of the head or to the cheekbones. They were punching low to protect your own hands. So this is also a better angle to be punching up from as well. Now if you can land the punch here, the burn up the punch here at Solar Texas, huge power shot. Make sure you drop your shoulder down to the same height as the target. Punching down isn't as strong as punching here. So you step in, dropping down, Basic punch. Everyone knows this punch. It's a classic boxing karate punch, really, but it's one of the most common ones found in burn knuckle. Here and here, it's a great power shot supplement. Now, the liver shot coming around long, bang here, liver on this side. Hit him on this side, it's a speed. The liver is probably the one to go for if you can, if you're fighting left leg forward. You're twisting up, bang, around here. You can do great too, the guy slips the punch, if you slip his punch, coming over, boom. Because he's thrown the punch, his body is stretched out more. If I hit Peter now, it hurts way more than if he's just standing there and he absorbs the punch. So, make sure again, great leverage here. 
if you want to watch some bare knuckle kaiko shinkai or say pancreas fight where the allows you to burn knuckles to the body you actually will see guys drop with this liver shot and they're dropping a lot a lot of pain if you get knocked out in the chin your brain spins so far because your head spins your brain bounces off your skull you won't really feel it just be bang out if someone drops with a liver shot or a solid plexus shot or breaks your ribs that really is a sickener, it kills you with the pain. If you have a choice, take a head shot. A body shot knockout is really the most painful one you can ever experience. So we've got the straight shot solar plexus this way or that way, and the liver shot coming through here. Now there's one last foul shot we can use, and it's using hands again. It's using the pad, especially for boxing, if you want to join the low blow. Instead of punching with the fist to the groin, you bring in the pad of a cut again, coming up here to the groin. And because you're coming up, you're scooping up, you're driving the cup of his groin guard up and crushing him. After smacking it, you drive the cup up and crush it. Even if you catch him in the waistband where the bar protector is, here, and come up, it's still going to drag it up and crush him and really hurt. And it doesn't look like a real full, hit him on the waistband and drag it up, it doesn't look like a full low blow at all. That's one of the dirtiest, most painful ones you can do in the ring as well. If you want to do it, I'm going to do it to Peter now, maybe in a clinch, I want to do it to Peter. And with Reeves, where you are now, if I do it now, he will see it. But if I'm in a clinch here, I'm going to move Peter. So I drag Peter this way, spinning him around on his spin. Boom, put a punch up while my back is to the camera or to the referee. So let's it one more time. You spin him a small bit, like a step there, throw the punch, bang, come up through. In that split second, your back is turned to the referee and you can be with the shot. Now it's some more throws. The first one is the foot stomp. You're in a clinch. You take your foot and you stab down really hard on his feet. Now it can be quick like this. If you're in a boxing match, you're wearing very, very thin boots. Even if it's not going that far, it will hurt his toes a lot. Hit the instep, you can break the instep too. Obviously, you can go for a pull power stomp like that to really, really smash his feet up. In mixed martial arts, you actually see it matches as they go up in this stomp. And it does put the guy off open for throws, especially up against the cage, and hurt his feet a lot as well. Now, what we're going to do is after you stomp, after you stomp his foot here, keep your foot on him, then you keep pushing into him with your shoulder. You can go two ways here. You can go down, land on top of him, driving your shoulder into him, or landing with your knee, landing into his groin when you hit him on the ground. So all your weight lands knee in the groin, shoulder into his chest, that will stop him. Or you can stomp on and get your hands in the centre and push him off there. If you keep his foot trapped on the ground and you're pushing him backwards, you can easily break his ankle here as well, so great way to throw him. If you're practicing it, don't break his ankle. So you stomp on here, shove him off, keep him from grabbing you. At the last second for practice, I'm going to let go now on the way down. In reality, keep your foot there and on the way down, you break his ankle. Now, if I'm going to go with him, here, stomping, shoving, down we go, bang, and you drop your knee right into his groin. Okay, let's do it again. So we're here, stomp, shove, bang. When you land, all my weight landed that time on my elbow, that, that's the part that's going to really hurt him badly. Push the plexus into the sternum. Both our weights crush him that way. Can you right leg forward? Once again. Now, another one you see in all the other books as well is the back heel throw. It's like a karate trip, really, as well. You step behind the body like that, one leg, you hit him in a palm over the chest or a form over the neck, and you go for a weeping throw. You do two ways. You're in tight range here, you step through, bring him down, again, finish, bang, drop the knee in the chest and start punching him again. You can also do a weeping motion where you go. 
that way and through and again all your weight lands into him at the same time notice i kept control of his arm here the whole time that way and on the ground you can hit him you don't want to bend against it so let's do this again very quickly so step through hit him with your hand weight goes down here you stomp down your tie pushes his tie like that see my knee that breaks his balance this obviously gets him over in the air and down to here the second one we from here key point is a quick change from here to here the whole time i'm on one leg that's his chance to throw me back and counter me let's go very fast from here to here so how would you do it maybe you upset him you might go for the foot stomp make him move his feet punch him throw the headbutt in headbutt's great to use here throw the head inside it bang come back across weep over land and punch all the shows the key is setting them up or doing them but he's not expecting to throw them all. Weeping throw, stomping, pushing throw to bring him down. But here's another you can find the old time books as well. You're in a clinch again, you grab his arm and you force it back that way. And you grab here, and then they place the knee behind the guy and they hook and they push him back against the knee. From here they go, punch to the body, punch to the head. It's all the classic books. It's a hard one to actually pull off now. But it's one that must be a lot or wouldn't be in the books. So they're clenching, they force the hand back, grab it, push the knee in tight, bring it back. One, two. Now the guy will obviously easily escape, escape their Peter, by spinning out of it. Okay? But while he's in it, you punch him once or twice when he's there. So we're gonna clinch again, force his hand back for a second, give him here. You have a really, really good shot to the grind as well from here now, he's totally happy to it knee as well, or to the face. And when Peter will escape the skateboarder, bang, hit him on the escape as well. Now, foot sweeping, what they call tripping, is really regarded by people who are gentleman boxes, a lower class thing to do. Chancery, hip throws, take times are going to just be just did, I'm all okay. They viewed sweeping as very low, low class company, but it's a great one to use anyway though. So for the sweeps, Basically, ones we can use are using the inner side of the boot here, across like that. And you're coming through here to lift his leg, coming through, okay? Just relax him right here. So, it's coming through here, boom, it's sweeping. Best used by them as a combination. They throw a straight right punch like that, and he's just carried the punch, okay? Punch the wheel at all, bang, afterwards. You see today we use excellently in Trisha Cry terminals, they love it, use it all the time to keep it down. The higher you get his foot to go, the more chance of a takedown. You can also throw the punch off there and push down on your hand at the same time. If you come in really, really tight, you're pushing them back, his feet are too scared now, you can come in, bang, hit both his feet to bring him down as well. Again, work on bringing the hip across and up, hip pushing here. The hip comes up and through, so we go up, pushing with the inner muscles here in the hip bone. Not a kick, it's a sweeping coming up and through. Also using the inside very effectively, okay. bring the foot across this way, drag it out, bang, elbow strike, or else you want to use yourself. Two from the clinch, we're here, bring this foot across again, drag him out. Upside them as well. Two good ways to sweep them in close range. Now you can also go from the back, run close again, bring your foot backwards quickly and drag him there. From the drags, he probably won't go down, but if I drag him this way, this lander, he'll probably land like that. See it again? So if I'm in close range, I drag him this way, it'll get him off balance. Remember we did a minute ago. If I drag him this way, boom. It gets my balance as well. Foot drag combined with the push and the pulling the head. If you're in close, 
all this be hanging onto his head, pulling it down, shoving it back, feeding it under your arm, anywhere to control his head. Once his head has been pushed back, down, anywhere at all, you can throw a power punch, you control the clinch, you can do what you want. The head controls the sense from the clinch. Okay, hip throws, what they call the cross buttock. Three or four years you can do them, they're all great throws to use and they all take it out straight away. Have to remember they fall on bare ground or boards, so throw someone hard to find the boards, fall on them, great way to finish the round off, hurt the guy really, really badly. A lot of the guys were really big, heavy guys, not so skilled, but I think it's a smaller, more skilled guy, they close them and throw them and try and finish them that way, but just pound them into the ground again and again and again. Well, if you're a bigger guy, fighting a smaller, quicker guy. And basic hip show. Say we're clean sure again for a reference point. Squeeze his hand, grab the elbow, get this hand deep as you can behind his back there like that. Now here's the key to it. Again, it's this step here. So with the hips, come through. Here is because has to counter me again, but it's pulling me down and backwards. I have to make sure this step here is as quick as possible. Really, really quick or it's not gonna work at all. So we're here, oh and it's back to him, boom, in goes the head, push him back, take your head off, out of the way, when his head's coming off my head, so I'm escaping the head and the grind, grab my head, grab my head into his face, that's my chance to go through. So push the head in, twist the hips out, that hides that step, mirror the feet, hips across, bend the knees, lift. If you did it right, you can hold him here. I use my legs to lift him, not my back and my arms. You bring him up and over, and we're here again to finish him off. Here we go. In tight, use the head, boom. Twist the hips, mirror the feet, hips across, bend the knees. You have to drop underneath him, put him forward, stand up. There he is. So, underneath him, pull forward, stand up. I didn't actually pick him up at all. Up and over. Boom. If you land on them as well, that'll be a finishing move. Now it's gonna throw again different way. Same case, this time, easier version. It's quite hard to get the whole way across here, and it's really good at if you grab his head, easier to get the head. Same thing, get that tom under his chin. So gum headlock, you punch him, boom, boom, stepped over, hips across. Your feet, mirror his feet, lower down, lift him up. You have control of him still, up and over. Here we are again. It's very important that you make that step across as fast as you can. One more time. So, you've got the head, you've punched him, maybe he's punching you, whatever. In the midst of all that, suddenly stops so I can change, mirror, hips, bend. All this practice this way. If you can hold him here, you can do the throw properly. If you can't hold him here, you're not doing it properly. Over and down. Okay, so one more time. So you're in the clinch, grab your head. Over and down. Now, the reaping throws, we're here again. So we've got an inside clinch under here. Murder feet. Bring your leg up, strike him with your tie again. So back of your hamstring hits the front of his tie. Don't hit his knee, he won't go anywhere at all. Hit his tie, and again, don't just kick it. You want to fill it here, you want to sweep up like that. You're going to sweep that way, not really just strike it. Okay? So, twist the foot, hips out. Put your foot kind of halfway a quarter between his feet. Here isn't as good. Here it's better if you can reach him that far. Up and drive. Okay, for the whole show. So we're here again. Step. Now, notice I didn't drop him too hard. It's a hard one to control. When you're practicing this, and be very careful because you can easily just slam him down as hard as you can without even meaning to do it. So be very careful in this one, not to throw him too hard. So one more. Twist, leap. And you can see it's quite a high fall. He goes up very, very high. It's a really heavy fall to take. And last one then. 
headlock, chancery, come over, murder feet, leap again. Up high, sweep through, back. Okay, let's do the whole thing. Set your foot, twist it out there. Head in nice and tight, up, and over and shoot. One more time since you're coming there. Got his head, step, and chew again. Yeah, the other can drop that knee and start him again. Now we're going to do some of the conditioning drills. These are going to be some of the old ways of trading and the new ways. We're going to combine boxing with cardio and with some pure cardio and cross fit training as well. Now, in the book that comes with these tapes, you'll see that you can do it in one or two, or even three minute rounds. You can pick how long the time is to suit yourself, okay? We're gonna demo all the exercises you can do, there's 12 we're gonna do, and then you can see yourself how to do them and follow the workouts we give you in the book as well. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, now this could be any basic boxing combination, a short one, a long one, we're gonna do a simple one. Be a left jab, a straight right, a left hook and a straight right. Let's do it again. One, two, one more time. Now pay attention to actually getting good leverage in each other. You see Peter is turning his body, twisting his shoulders, tight guard, not just throwing four bad sloppy punches. Every punch by how hard you get has to be a leverage clean punch with the hands up covering the face. No matter what, have to do it that way. Okay, let's go. And time. So you get the idea. Nice and fast, push, push, push. The guy holding the pad is in charge of the speed. Push him, push him, push him. Make sure he punches properly. Now this one is a great way. It combines cardio, working your abs, especially your obliques, and it's one of the best ones you can do ever for getting power in your punches. Good power comes from leverage and twisting. It's one of the best ones of all to develop leverage and twisting. Let's do one there. You sit up and punch twice. You gotta make sure you lean back and you twist your shoulders as far as you can every single time. Let's do it again there. He leans back and twists. Okay, let's do some there. Lean back and twist, good. Now each punch as hard as you can. And time. You can do two ways. You can take commission again and again, or you can go left, right, right, left. Left, right. Right, left. Okay, left, right again. Now, right, left. Good. You do both ways, okay? I especially like going left, right, right, left, because it gets both sides equally powerful. You gotta remember, a lot of guys throw the left punch, not very powerful at all. Get good leverage in the left side as well. Now, we're gonna do a variation of the hill sprint. It's a short hill, but up and down very intensely. It's great to work out. It's best thing for your cardio, burning fat, and pick up the legs as well. One up walk down. Never run down, it's very bad for your knees. Obviously take a time coming down, don't fall down. Okay, I'll do a couple here. Swing up. And you walk down. And just repeat it. Like so. Okay, second variation, piggyback carry. Now, for the start, get a partner smaller than yourself if you can, at the most the same size. Peter, nearly as big as me, so he'd be grand. Now, you've got to make sure, take it lightly first. You don't want to fall on the hill. Find a good hill that you can climb up nice and steady without slipping and hurting yourself. Okay, let's do one. Jump on. There we go. Okay, make sure he doesn't choke in the way up. Okay, let's go. So, that's the 
first one. It's worth doing it two or three times, or you can do it once, stop over, stop over every time. Version three, fireman's carry. Watch out now how it's actually up properly or hurting yourself. So, go right leg to right leg, take his elbow, or his bits, I run his spine, pull over. You have to get him up to here before you stand up or won't work. Step in nice and deep, pull him over, get him way over, look up using only your legs, pick him up nice and balanced here, okay? And then we turn over. Okay, that's it. And again, the three taking turns. I definitely advise practicing the carry walking first to land the hole. That's so definitely get better, start running out of there. Okay, now for the wife carry. So this one again, under, over, use your legs to pick up. So, hand behind the back, as far as you can go. Reach in, get your elbow into his knee, not your hand, your elbow into his knee. There, elbow in, elbow in. Pick him up using the hips only, head up, hips down, use the legs, up we go, and move on. Again, switch over every time. Now, if you haven't got a partner at all, or a partner's too big for you to carry, get a log, a stone, a canvas bag for the sand, anything be that's big and heavy that you can carry. Stick it on your shoulder, and the same thing, up and down. Okay, there you go, Peter. And down again. Again, simple and easy. What I suggest you make it harder is put it down again. Put the other shoulder. Okay, go. If you put it down and change shoulders every time, putting it down. This one again will try you out extra fast and hard and get you using all those big muscles to pick it up. Make sure you pick it up, back flat, bend the knees, look up. Obviously don't bend over and do it. So make sure you use good lifting technique on all these moves here. Now, second great use for the log. It's heavy, it's not really a bad to weight, it's much harder to lift than arm barbell. Good way to use it done. Palm under, palm up. Bands are nice and tight first. I just push, press, and do as many as you can for your arm is burning out, up and down. Do as many as you can before failure. Don't drop it in your face. Now, second use of the log, or a stone, or a medicine ball. You pick it up, throw it as far as you can, go run, pick it up, do it again. So lift it, go for the press overhead. Push it up, one over. And repeat and repeat, one of the very best cardio and strength workers you can ever do. Alright, and the last of the log exercises is a spot holding the log over your head. So, grip it again. A good balance over your head. Your feet wide apart, down and up. You're working both to strengthen your shoulders and your legs. Now, in the same good form as like any weighted squat, heels on the ground, push up, heels on the ground, push up again, do as many as you can. Do this at the end after the other three. Up and down. Right, the second last exercise, the chins. 
or using a grant and a karate belt, brown karate belt, by any sports store, much cheaper than buying a rope or chains. And it's extra good to hang on to the belt, really rocks your grip like nothing else. Okay, Peter, can you see it for Two, three, four. Okay, easy, inexpensive way of doing chins. Best way of splitting your hands and your arms. The final one then is the hang time. It's gonna go up there and step as long as you can, okay? Goes up, and it stays there. You can time, start about 10 seconds, work up to even a minute hanging there, straightens your grip and your arms like nothing else. Okay, now we're gonna demo some light burn up the spine. The thing about sparring is, to be honest, usually we spar with a light mixed martial arts style, so they're very thin, but it's not getting cut open. There's no real need to spar bare knuckle. If you have light gloves, that's enough for you to do. But just to show you in the video what it's actually like to spar bare knuckle, I give you an idea more how different punches go in and the other spikes as well. We're going to do and show you it now, okay? Thank you. 